Now, it's time for Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf, the number one relationship advice radio show in the U.S. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Dr. Love. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, and as you heard, the show is the number one relationship advice show in America. And starting this week, we're being syndicated weekly in five of the top 10 US radio markets. So welcome. For those of you who are new to my work, let me give you a quick introduction of what to expect each week. I'm here to help you improve all your relationships with life partners, friends, family members, and even coworkers. I have 40 years of clinical experience and I've been helping people for decades at AskDrLove.com and through many, many best-selling books. Nowadays, a lot of people are lonely, hiding out at home and feeling disconnected from others. If you're lonely and looking for love, you're not alone. I've helped so many people find deeply meaningful connections and I'm determined to help you. You don't have to be and you won't be alone forever. If you're already in a relationship that's rocky and you're not getting what you want out of it, what you will learn here on this show is going to bring you the love you want and deserve. And if you're hurting over a bad breakup or the loss of a loved one, stay tuned. Now, I don't want you to think this show is only for lovers. Maybe you're fighting with your kids, friends, or coworkers. The who you're fighting with doesn't matter. It's all the same. I promise you there is a way to stop the fighting and that's what we're going to work on. Stopping the fighting and connecting better is what this show is about. Now on to today's show, how to connect when you don't see eye to eye. Now I don't have to tell you that the world is in a great deal of chaos. It's become increasingly clear to me that all the chaos associated with this pandemic is taking a toll on all of us. All the stress associated with the pandemic is also taking a serious toll on our relationships. Now more than ever, we need to feel connected to others, but divergent political views and pandemic health disagreements are ripping relationships apart. So for the syndication debut of Ask Dr. Love, we're going to tackle this timely topic. I'm gonna show you how to maintain and even strengthen a relationship with those you love, especially when you don't see eye to eye. Now, many not seeing eye to eye conflicts are actually what's known as value conflicts. And if you're contending around sexual, religious, financial, health, or political beliefs, there's a good chance you're in a value conflict. And the really sad fact is that many people in intimate relationships are fighting over value-laden issues and don't even know that's what's happening. Because this is such a thorny and little understood topic, I devoted an entire chapter to value conflicts in my first Tales book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. So today for our first love school lesson, I'm gonna give you a crash course on how to know if you're locked in a value conflict and if you are, how to navigate your way out, a way that actually brings you greater connection and intimacy. And as a special treat in today's show, I'm debuting a very exciting first ever reality radio segment called In the Ring. In this segment, I'm gonna work with two fighting people live on air, and I'm gonna guide them to resolve their fight and develop deeper intimacy and connection in the process. So in keeping with today's show, in today's In the Ring, we're gonna meet with two friends whose relationship is on the rocks as a result of their very divergent diametrically opposed views and attitudes regarding politics and the vaccine. And as I help them navigate these choppy waters, we're gonna be strengthening their relationship despite their value conflict. So pay close attention, listen with the ears of your heart, and you're gonna learn how to take this show on the road and bring what I teach you today to the people closest to you. This means starting today and each week that you tune in, you're going to become a more and more honed pebble in the proverbial pond, spreading peace and love one relationship at a time. So let's dive in. Could you be in a value conflict and not even know it? How can you tell if you're locked in a value conflict? Well, today, many people are fighting to the death 
and even walking away from cherished relationships with friends and family members and breaking up or divorcing over value clashes without even realizing that's what's happening and without knowing that there is a way to bypass these clashes and become closer to each other in the process. So here's your first important takeaway because values make up the core of who you are. Nobody has the right to change your values any more than you have the right to change someone else's. Let me give you an example. Mike and Marie were sitting in my office arguing over her habit of leaving dinner dishes in the sink to soak. Mike, an ex-military man, is militant over finishing the kitchen detail before moving on to other activities. But for Marie, his insistence that the kitchen be instantly spick and span feels like he's bashing her with a frying pan. She can't swallow his values, nor should she be asked to. And he can't stand what he sees as her lax cleaning habits, and he shouldn't be pushing his Mr. Clean values on her. This couple is locked in a value conflict. So what are values? Values are important and lasting beliefs or ideals shared by the members of a culture, group, family, or individual about what is good or bad and desirable or undesirable. Values are assimilated through our upbringing, our social conditioning, and our culture. We're enveloped in them in the form of rules, morals, and social norms before we even realize we have a choice about which ones we want to live by. And when we're young, it's often a matter of compliance with the enforced values of family, school, and community, the way of fitting in, the price of belonging. When we're older, these values are so ingrained, we often take them for granted and assume they are the only right way to be and tacitly accept them or unconsciously live them out. And it's often through conflict with peers, parents, and teachers, and through encountering others who hold different values from our own that we begin to question the conventional and majority value that we may have felt pressured to adopt. Now, how do values figure into relationship conflict? When values clash, people clash. There's much to be said for what's known as homogamy or similarity of values in intimate relationships. The reason homogamy is highly correlated with relationship satisfaction is because when we see eye to eye, we don't end up in conflict over everything, which makes for smoother relationship sailing. So when you think about religious, financial, cultural, health, sexual, or political beliefs, tastes, and preferences, again, you have to remember that these values make up the core of an individual. They're not up for negotiation. To attempt to do so would be like trying to force a leopard to rearrange its spots. The leopard wouldn't like that, and you need a lot of sutures to stitch up all the injury you caused. Now, unfortunately, many distressed relationships are in trouble because the players are, without knowing it, fighting about and attempting to negotiate behavioral changes around value. Let me give you an example. You and your partner have different preferences regarding where you like to have sex. Your mate likes sex on the living room floor, whereas for you, foraying onto the floor and beyond the posturepedic mattress is not in your repertoire. Neither person's preferred location is wrong. Each of you is entitled to his or her mattress mores. You know, on the subject of taste and values, let me tell you about Vicky. Her bathtub drain is clogged beyond belief with a lethal sized hairball. She said to me, if only Pete would outgrow his hippie phase and buzzsaw that mound of spaghetti on his head, I wouldn't be forced to play Mrs. Plummer. Now she went on to explain that Pete likes his hair long and he refuses to cut it and they habitually argue on this subject. Are Pete's hair follicle preferences an area in which Wick, Vicky has a right to request change? Does she have a right to demand that he cut his hair? We're talking about Pete's hair follicle values and either Vicky can live with them or she can't. Now, I've talked so far about the fact that attitudes, tastes, and preferences are non-negotiable, but what about habits? So in the case of Pete, if his long hair impinges on Vicky by clogging the drain, then she may have a subject worthy of no negotiation. Respecting his hair values would mean not expecting him to cut his hair, but rather his respecting her neatness values by clearing the drain for her. But what if you're arguing over habits that are value laden? Then these habits are also non-negotiable. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say that each Sunday morning you like to dive into the household chores, but during that time your husband lounges on the couch, avoiding anything productive. 
you may feel tempted to negotiate for a change of behavior. But what if your husband's Saturday lounging habit is value-laden? Let's say he was raised an Orthodox Jew and was prohibited to do any work on the Sabbath. Well, in this case, relaxing on Saturday mornings is a part of his value system. So you can't and shouldn't touch his Sabbath habits with a 10-foot pole. But handing him the broom on another day and time is totally kosher. Now, here's another example. A husband who was raised by parents who were free spirits has a habit of paying his bills at the very last minute. He pays them just at the last minute. So his parents taught him that life should be primarily fun and that work and chores are done after the fun is done. So as you can see, this husband's habit of paying bills in the 11th hour is also value laden. Now, what if his wife was raised in a family that taught her to be early for appointments and deadlines, then her expectation that the bills be paid early is also value laden. And in this case, the couple has a clash of values. What can be done about this, short of divorce, I mean? Since values are an integral part of a person's makeup, again, you can't ask someone to negotiate away a part of his identity any more than you can be asked to do this. Demanding that your partner alter a behavior that is value laden is like asking him to commit psychological suicide. And what's more, expecting someone to relinquish a value laden behavior is tantamount to saying that his value is wrong and yours is right. This type of qualitative judgment doesn't apply to values. Values may clash, but they can't be labeled wrong or right. So how do you handle behaviors and habits that are value laden? So I'm gonna give you three steps. First, ask yourself, do I really wanna get into a war over this value laden habit? Asking this question may lead you to simply accept your differences and the behaviors that arise out of these different values. Two, you can address the value laden behavior as though it were an emotional issue by listening to each other's point of view without trying to enforce a behavioral change on each other. And three, as a result of your mutual understanding and respect for each other's values, you may decide to negotiate a resolution that is acceptable to you both, a resolution, a solution in which both your values are respected. And to do this, you would follow the negotiation steps I described in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. And we're gonna be getting into these steps in the weeks and months to follow. Now, another thing to consider when you're dealing with behaviors that annoy you, it would be wise to ask yourself, is this behavior directed against me? Many people are prone to excessive personalization and we need to be aware of the tendency to wrongly assume that the other person is hanging on to a habit to intentionally annoy, provoke, or defy you. To steer away from unwarranted personalization, you could ask yourself, would this other person still engage in this annoying behavior or habit if he or she lived alone? Did he or she act this way before I was on the scene? Very often, when you examine the issue with a cool eye, you're gonna realize that the behavior or habit is not directed against you. And this may help you let go of the issue. The next thing you need to know is that oftentimes value conflicts are smoke screens for deeper emotional issues, issues that we aren't even aware of. Let me give you an example. Paula and Jerry continually argue about whether to marry or not. He believes that love is all that counts and that a piece of paper is not needed to prove his love. Paula wants a fairy tale wedding bash. These two people share different values on the subject of marriage. Either they can decide to live with their differences or they can't. But there also may be more going on here than meets the eye. Maybe Paula and Jerry are fighting about I do or I don't instead of facing deeper issues. Maybe fighting about whether to marry or not conceals deep fears of intimacy and commitment. See what I mean? Let me give you another example. I worked with a couple who didn't see eye to eye when it comes to politics. She was a Democrat and he was a staunch conservative. On election day, she demanded that he go with her to the polls and vote her way. She was trying to force the leopard to change its spots big time. On the surface, you might be tempted to think that their argument was simply a political value conflict, or was it? And this leads me to the next point. This next point is, and this point is vital, you have to avoid arguing about the overt fight content. We're going to take a brief break. And when we, con when we come back, I'm going to help you understand a little bit more about why you can't argue on the overt fight content. 
Be back with you in a moment on Ask Dr. Lowe. Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Did you know only one stress, one accident, or one illness can trigger PTSD? And did you know that all the stress associated with the pandemic has created what I call the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome? And don't be so quick to say, I don't have PTSD, because many conditions like depression, anxiety, pain syndrome, sleep disorders, and sexual dysfunctions are PTSD in disguise. And don't be fooled, even after the pandemic is behind us, your PTSD will not go away by itself. Hope is in sight. In my latest book, If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again, I share a simple, research-backed, drug-free program for reversing the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome, a solution your doctor doesn't likely know about. Read If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again today and be on the road to recovery right away. If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again became a number one international bestseller within 24 hours of its publication. Grab your copy on Amazon. Amazon and find out why. Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Time with live video shows every first and third Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, a.k.a. Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in to find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's best-selling Hay House book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship, shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. To find out more, visit AskDrLove.com. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Again, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Love. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, and we're talking about how you can connect with someone and get out of the fighting that you're doing, even when you don't see eye to eye. So before we took the break, I said, I'm going to talk to you more about how it's important that you avoid arguing over the overt fight content. So I'm going to dig into this for a second. The things we fight about, the overt fight content, are often smoke screens that conceal the real emotional issues, issues that are tied to what I call the old scars from childhood. Now, to resolve our fights, it's vital to uncover and discuss the emotions that underlie our areas of conflict, including the behaviors that are value-driven. Dri value the feelings ideally should be explored before you even think about negotiating for behavioral change. Here's where things get tricky. The feelings that we're aware of are generally fueled by significant and painful injuries from when we were young. So if you want to resolve your conflict, you need to go beyond the overt fight content and the here and now emotional layer and access what I call your emotional core, the deepest part of yourself. Unless you unearth your core feelings, you're going to have little hope of making any headway in your fights. Now, many people in couples and family therapy are led down the rabbit hole as a therapist guides them to negotiate on overt subjects of conflict. And they create contracts that result from these negotiations, contracts that don't work because they never address the real issue. That is the feelings underlying the overt issue they're arguing about. So as I said, when you're fighting over a current issue, it's often because an old scar from childhood is actually in play and you don't know it. And our brains fool us into thinking that our intense feelings are related to what we're fighting about now. Let me give you an example. Think back of, to the Democratic wife and the conservative husband that I mentioned in the first segment. She was abused by her brother when she was a child and she never felt protected by her parents. In her mind, the conservative party has become the abuser and the oppressor of the weak, which is how she sees herself. Trying to twist her husband's arm to vote her way was an unconscious ploy to get her parents to protect her. In other words, their fight 
was way beyond the value conflict. Let me give you another example. A woman who was abandoned in childhood feels terrified that her husband is going to abandon her whenever he, he comes home late from work. Not realizing the source of her fear, she falls into the trap that most people do. She argues with him on the overt content, his lateness. Why didn't he call? What was he doing? Who was he with? Now, once you veer off onto a discussion of the current triggering behaviors, the overt content, um, you are really in trouble. I mean, that is the natural pro progression. People negotiate a contract that outlines more acceptable behaviors, but the feelings of fear, hurt, and anger, and the original source of these feelings, her early abandonment, didn't get revealed or discussed. These feelings have gone underground, and they're just going to keep reappearing until they're brought to light and healed. And to complicate matters, the husband may have spoken may have unspoken feelings that are being, being expressed by his lateness. What if he was hurt or angry over something she said to him and he didn't know how to talk about it? So his lateness could be a nonverbal expression of his unspoken feelings. So I hope you're beginning to see that falling into the trap of trying to negotiate for a behavioral change, like having him phone if he's gonna be late, may not resolve the true issue. Her feeling of insecurity and fear of abandonment is still there. And their arguments over his lateness and trying to force him to change his behavior adds to the anger that was already festering inside him and will now snowball into a blizzard of anger and resistance. My point is, when negotiating for behavioral changes proves ineffective in solving an area of conflict, you have to always assume that feelings were brushed under the rug and you have to look for what the real feelings are. Let me give you a, another example. A woman was hurt and angry that her partner never pitched in to help her around the house. For years, the couple worked in therapy and negotiated all kinds of contracts to no avail. Well, when Lily came to see me, she was moaning over the fact that her partner didn't care about her. And I realized why contracting had never worked for this couple. Her partner had not understood how she felt about having to handle all the housework. Lily had been the Cinderella in her first family, and she was forced to do all the chores while her sister went out to play. So when her husband doesn't chip in, in the house, on the housework, Lily unconsciously relived the pain she suffered in her family of origin. And the more they fought, and the increasing attempts to force him to follow chore contracts made him angry and less willing to pitch in, which added salt to her early wound. So how did I help this couple out of this impasse? Well, first I helped her to recognize what old scar from her childhood was being replayed through their repetitive fights. And then I helped her to tell her partner about the origins of her pain. And here's the coolest thing. By sharing her emotional core, she transformed him from enemy to ally. Sharing her emotional truth helped him to feel empathy for the pain she suffered as a kid. And his love for her naturally led him to want to shift his behavior and do more chores. This resolution didn't come about from negotiating for behavior change. It came from a deep emotional understanding of each other's core feelings, including the early origins of their feelings. The point is, talking from the heart effortlessly resolved the impasse. So the point to remember is, value conflicts are non-negotiable. And here's the ticket. The emotions that are stirred as a result of differing values can certainly be handled in the same way that you address any emotional state. And in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, I show you how to step by step to discuss your feelings in a way that makes your partner want to listen to you. And this includes cooling down the climate, using various climate control techniques, pre presenting your issue using my XY formula, becoming a master at listening. We'll go into all of this in the weeks to come. So, to sum up, value conflicts are non negotiable. Value differences need to simply be accepted. Respect your differences and steer clear of contentious value laden discussions. If you're struggling with habits or behaviors that arise out of values and some type of behavioral change is needed, don't try to force each other to change your behaviors. Instead, collaborate by listening to each other and reflecting back what you hear to ensure that you have a, thoroughly, a thorough grasp of each other's thoughts and points of view. And as you're listening and deepening your understanding of each other, it's time to put your heads together to come up with a solution, if needed, that respects both of your value systems. 
By taking this approach, you aren't twisting anyone's arm. You're working together in a loving and respectful way to come up with a resolution that works for both of you and respects both of your values. When conflict value arguments erupt, seek to understand the old scars that are often masquerading as value conflicts. Feeling heard and understood in our early areas of pain often is all that's needed to diffuse value conflict arguments. And in the process of sharing your innermost thoughts and feelings, you are building deeper intimacy and connection. Feeling truly held, heard, and understood is how we build solid bridges to connect us to each other. And that connects us value clashes and all. So here's a tip of the week. This is about, this is from functional sociologist Talcott Parsons. He's a noted Noted, noted functional sociologist, sociologist. He said, Americans share the common value of the American work ethic, which encourages hard work. Other sociologists have proposed a common core of American values, including accomplishment, material success, problem solving, reliance on science and technology, democracy, patriotism, charity, freedom, equality, and justice, individualism, responsibility, and accountability. And here are four little tweets for you, little rhymes to help you remember the essence of the message today. Values are to be respected, not dissected. Values are here to stay, so stop forcing others to think your way. If behavioral changes are needed, don't negotiate, collaborate, and search for the old scars lurking beneath the overt fight content, and you will be content. All right. So we are going to go in the ring and uh, I want you to say a quick hello to the two guys who are having uh, some difficulties. We're going to say hello to them. We only have a couple of minutes left in this segment, but in the last two segments of the show, we're going to dive in with Oscar and Tim and help them navigate their very intense value conflict that's really hampering their relationship. So Tim, and Oscar, are you guys here? We're here. Oscar? Oscar? And where's the beef with Oscar? <laughs> Speaking of the beef, Oscar Meyer, where's the beef? Don't hear uh, you, Oscar. Yeah, I, I had my thing uh, checked out. Hi, thank you, Dr. Turndorf. And hi, Tim. Hey, hello. Oscar. Hi, Tim, and hello, listening audience. Hello. It's so nice to be here with you. It's amazing what you can do, uh, Dr. Turndorf, with a couple of tin cans and a piece of string. I'm very, very impressed th at this. Yeah, we got a we need a very long <laughs> string to connect all of us all over the world. So, Blast. and we're live streaming now on YouTube as well. And uh, we started five minutes late, so I got a little discombobulated at the beginning, and then I had to rapidly do uh, some high finance calculations because we're working on a clock, so I had to quickly, you know, move the the time clock a bit. So, um, so I know you guys were very nervous to come on and do this this experience. So I want to thank you for doing it with me, and. You know, I said to you, Oscar, when I first broached the subject with you, will you come on and talk with Tim? Um, you said that you really were reluctant. And if you recall, there was a lot of anger coming out of you, you know, and you kept on going into all the, you know, the content of the areas in which you don't agree with lots of details. And, you know, you were making a big case. And, you know, I had to like wrestle you to the ground and say, we're not going to talk about the overt content. We're not going to talk about the thing, right? The whole point of resolving a value conflict is to not go head to head and contend about your differing values, right? And so it took me, I would say, a half hour to get you off the rage, you know, and the foaming at the mouth. So I want everybody watching and listening to understand, to st understand that my heart goes out to you and it is not a, a natural thing for you to make the shift that Oscar made to be able to lay aside his values and accept that's not what we're going to be talking about, not the overt content, right? So 
once we've laid that foundation, we're going to just take a break and we'll be back in a moment on Ask Dr. Love. Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed out or suffering panic attacks, aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Or are you worried or depressed or feeling hopeless, like the world is coming to an end? Or are you not eating right or exercising or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, TV or the internet? Or abusing drugs or alcohol, figuring what's the point? Or maybe work is getting on your last nerve or your relationships are falling apart? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My Energetic System Upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The Energetic System Upgrade has already changed the lives of some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own Energetic System Upgrade healing transformation. I'm offering a limited number of discounted sessions for my radio listeners. Visit AskDrLove.com forward slash Energetic System Upgrade. Don't wait. Visit AskDrLove.com forward slash Energetic system upgrade you're listening to ask dr love with dr jamie turndorf if you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one dr turndorf's number one international bestseller love never dies how to reconnect and make peace with the deceased shows you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking dialoguing with the departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit to find out more visit askdrlove.com and now back to ask dr love with dr jamie turndorf and welcome back to Ask Dr. Love. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, and we're talking about how you can connect when you don't see eye to eye. We spent the first two segments talking about value conflicts and how it's important to not start locking horns around the overt content of the fight and to drill deeper down into the feelings. So uh, I'm wel- welcoming back Oscar and Tim, two guys who are in an intense political value conflict. And so guys, We've never done anything like this before live on radio. I don't think anyone ever has done anything like this. So we're finding our way. And I think that the best way for us to begin is for you to make a statement to the other, whoever wishes to start first, about how you understand the problem between you. Okay? Okay. Tim, do you want to respond first? Um, <clears throat> I, I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Uh, if you prefer, I'll, no, I'll, I can, I'll I do can it. Go, um, yeah, I think it's um, one of the things is that obviously my you know what's going on in the world today is very intense, certainly with the vaccines and uh, you know mandates and whatnot and masking and uh, personal. Uh, invasion of that into our bodies and into my body and into my life and having very intense feelings about that and wanting to actually uh, somehow communicate that to you, Oscar, in a way that because it's important to me. And so because it's important and, and it and it has great meaning to me, I want you to know how I feel. But then, of course, you don't agree about uh, masking or not taking the vac- the COVID-19 vaccine. And so then that triggers you then to have a uh, feeling that goes, that then taps into your feeling about uh, politics and the vaccinations. And, and so then we're, then we're there, then we're in the ring. And then it's, and then it's, then the love, then, then the love that we do have for one another uh, takes a back seat and then we're we're in our brains more and we're out of our hearts that's how good, i understand good, it good way to put it i like the way you put that it doesn't feel exactly how uh, how i feel um because uh you know i i uh i do wear the mask and i have taken all the vaccines um but I, I, 
I think I, I hope and I do I believe in my heart that you know that uh, that I'm for uh, you feeling the, the, the feeling of freedom that you need to feel. I'm you know I, I'm sure I'm I, I'm absolutely certain that you are aware yeah. that I'm you know because uh, when Dr. Turndorf was describing our relationship, um, she uh, uh, made us uh, adversaries. I guess it's part of the promise, uh, the premise of the of the program that we be adversaries. But I think in reality, you and I are very connected emotionally, very, very, very yeah. deeply. At least I feel that you know, and I feel it's a very you know that, and I think that does illustrate her point is that even though we are at opposite ends of some areas the part that we have found that is common to us is the hard part that you described, Tim. That, and okay. to me, that's my, the importance of your, uh, right. Right. of you in my life and how precious you are to me. Right. May I insert something here? You guys have already done a lot of work on this topic. And I mean, we've been working a while on this, right? There were times where your conversations were extremely heated and, Tim, you ha have gone through periods where you went underground and didn't talk at all. Yes. Because you were so afraid of right. um, Oscar's judgment of you. So this really segues in to what I was talking about in the first two segments of the show. That is the going beneath the overt topics of vaccines and politics and all of that to what is emotionally significant and what is this the, the larger the larger conversation really, how, do, how does it connect to your old scars? And the reason we've made so much progress is we, we have gone beneath the overt content. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be helpful to talk more about what you've come to understand the politics and the vax means to both of you. And give us a demonstration really of your deeper understanding and talk to each other about that. Oscar, do you wanna go or, or do you? Well, I could do that. Um, yeah, for me, um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, very accepting of uh, your, uh, your, your, your way of being, um, your health, your health, uh, your self care. But, uh, and here's where it goes. Um, if we were to be in the same room, I wouldn't be in the same room. I mean, I've survived open heart surgery. I'm in my 70s. I've had other very deep uh, surgeries and uh, issues. I'm type two diabetic. And the thought of, uh, of exposure makes me afraid. But it doesn't change how I feel towards you. You know, you have a right to do what you want in your space, but if you're going to be in my space, that's different. Like in my home, you would have to either be, um, take a, uh, um, you know, take a, a, some, you know, preventative measures that would protect me. But um, you notice so, what, what we're talking about here is still the thing, right? Yeah, we're talking about the thing. Now, so, because I don't know where you're, what you're asking me to do. What here. I'm asking you, okay. What are you asking for? All right, for Tim, for you, Tim, this right. topic of don't tread on me, don't right. tell me what I have to take, what yep. I have to do, goes all the way back yep. to your first family. Oh, I can speak to that. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it, uh, one of the things is that, uh, and I think this is actually why I love you so much, Oscar, is because um, you actually remind me of my my first family uh, in terms of having very strong beliefs yourself and ha having very strong value uh, values. Uh, re you remind me of my dad, actually. Um, and then the, the mandates and the masking and all of that remind me of uh, the uh, kind of the oppressive, somewhat oppressive uh, environment I was in as a kid, you know, being a hyperactive child and I, I, I was forced to take Ritalin and uh, being given drugs to, to kind of 
you know, suppress me and to make me different. And uh, so I have an, I have a kind of an innate um, repulsion to all of what's going on now. So that reminds me of that. And then on top of it, um, when I speak of that, and then you ask her having a reaction, a definitive reaction to that, as, a, as opposed to my non-masking or my non-vaccination or my different opinion about what the vaccine is or the virus is, um, it deepens in there. And so then I'm, it's like a double whammy for me there. And I get triggered because it reminds me of being completely just squashed as a kid. I was put on a harness as a child. I was, I was completely repressed and just squashed. So all of those feelings come to the surface so quickly. And um, if I don't remind myself of how much I love you, I go right into that rage and it's a, like a snowball effect. So um, that's, that's in a nutshell what happens for me. Um, did you want to go from, did that's, you want to? Very well yeah, yeah, I wanted to respond to you. Yes. Because, uh, because I really hope you know that, uh, you know, I'm so deeply um, involved in your story, in your experience and yes. where you're, mm -hmm. so that um, I really hope you know that I, I do understand what your rebellion is about, what your, uh, defiance is about that the thing with the uh with the uh with the uh, putting you on a on a leash is just like it's 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 devastating and it's horrific and it it makes perfect sense to me that you would be if you know even even put yourself in a what i think is harm's way by not wearing a mask because it represents another imposition upon you i totally think i really really hope you see that i get that because yeah. i do and i am totally on your side with that aspect but i do need to protect myself as well right. without getting in your face right you know we have a we have a, a an electronic relationship we have a we have a uh, a toucan toucan and uh, and string relationship, right? And we've been close and getting closer and closer for years. It's almost a decade. I know you. You're precious to me. Yes, but yes. I also have to protect myself, and I think that this illustrates exactly what Doctor Turndorf is talking about. Yes. You know, the the thing. You know that that that's that. Uh, I don't know what, what did you call that stuff. That's the 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 non personal stuff, the political jazz. Um, it, in the beginning of our relationship, yeah, I was a uh, very uh, cautious. You know, with you, uh, very apprehensive. Uh, you know, um, I grew up in a Jewish family, so I I'm a Jew. I'm very secular, but I'm a Jew. And now I'm hearing stuff on the radio. This is. This is not you, but I'm picking this up from. This is my breath. This is the stuff I'm bringing to the relationship. I'm hearing about the eleven people who, who were slaughtered in the uh, um, uh, 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 synagogue in in Texas, and the people who were uh, held captive. The four people who were held captive. I'm hearing about white supremacists. I'm hearing about racists. I'm seeing Nazi flags in parades and guys with tiki torches, and you know, if, if you're going to be on the other side, that's great. But how do I be like, you're not, a, you're not a white supremacist. Yes, Chester, hold but, on one second, because we're going to have to go to a break. And we are really on the cusp now yeah. of your own terror and right. how it goes all the way back to what you were taught to fear from the time As a you child. Were so let's take this break, okay? And when we come back, I would like you to dig more into, because your terror is at the heart of why, of why you have been so distressed and in contention with Tim. So let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf. 
Did you know only one stress, one accident, or one illness can trigger PTSD? And did you know that all the stress associated with the pandemic has created what I call the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome? And don't be so quick to say, I don't have PTSD, because many conditions like depression, anxiety, pain syndrome, sleep disorders, and sexual dysfunctions are PTSD in disguise. And don't be fooled, even after the pandemic is behind us, your PTSD will not go away by itself. Hope is in sight. In my latest book, If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again, I share a simple, research-backed, drug-free program for reversing the new global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome, a solution your doctor doesn't likely know about. Read If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again today and be on the road to recovery right away. If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again became a number one international bestseller within 24 hours of its publication. Grab your copy on Amazon. Amazon and find out why. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If your heart is still hurting over the bodily loss of your loved one, the reason is simple. We're not meant to be separated from those we love, and reconnecting is the only way to end the grief. But reconnecting and staying connected requires guidance. As a gift to her listeners, Dr. Turndorf is offering a limited number of discounted grief relief sessions to help you reestablish your relationship and resolve any unfinished issues. If you're ready to experience the healing, and joy of reconnecting, visit AskDrLove.com slash Grief Relief to schedule your session. But don't wait. Space is limited. Visit AskDrLove.com slash Grief Relief to find out more. And now, back to Dr. Turndorf. again and welcome back to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. We're talking with Oscar and Tim, two guys who don't see eye to eye. And just before we took the break, Oscar, I was hearing you starting to get that wound up sound and you began to speak about how from the time you were a young child in a Jewish family, you were talked to about the Holocaust and all the ways to, you know, you were, fear was a very big part of your upbringing, right? And you're seeing sim- things going on in the larger culture now that remind you of the buildup to the Holocaust. So can you talk a little bit about this and how your upbringing and those, those terrified feelings are impacting what's going on in the world now and your relationship with Tim? Yeah, sure. I'd be glad to do that. Uh, I don't think that Tim is uh, a white supremacist or a Nazi or uh, a proud boy or one of those, uh, you know, those groups, the, the, the ultra militant ones, the ones that had a, a boat on the Potomac uh, with, a, you know, I don't think uh, that you're really one of those people. Um, but I did grow up um, hearing about uh, uh, the Holocaust, and uh, you know, of course, there are Holocaust deniers, but they're not on my side of the of the street. They're on the other side of the street, on the on the conservative side. So you know, I'm I'm set up. Again, you know, I defend everybody's right to be in their own philosophy, to have their own way of wait, looking at wait, things. Oscar, I need to jump in because you have a, you're in a part of your brain that's more like logical and intellectual. And I am, I wanted to talk more to the fearful feeling place within yourself because it's that place that has fueled the dis, the difficulties with Tim, if you understand what I mean. Because I, you do something that I notice a lot of people do. You convert the fear into anger and then you start building a case and your voice raises and you're arguing a point. And then we're losing the core of you. The fear is the actual feeling, not the rage. The fear is the feeling, but I, I don't feel uh, fear towards Tim. I guess I'm just sort of transferring that over to you, Tim. Um, I don't, but, you, but you said to me when I asked you if you would come on, you talked and you said, I'm afraid of Tim. He, he goes and does protests. People are violating the government. I'm afraid. You were talking in a very, you know, on the yeah. primitive feeling level. Yeah, that's, that's where it's at. Yes, that's true. I'm afraid that, uh, I'm afraid that uh, 
you know, if I, it, uh, I, I don't, when I talk about my things, I don't talk about them on a nationally syndicated program. My personal life, I don't feel a need to spread that across the nation. That's why I'm speaking to you with a uh, uh, with an alias. Why I'm not using my real name on your program, because some of the people on the other side of the fence have machine guns and have been doing like really, you know, criminal things. And I am afraid of them. I'm afraid to speak and oppose them publicly. How does that connect? And I never have. How does that connect to you and Tim? I don't know. I, I, I don't feel, uh, I, I don't know what happens when, when you go to one of those rallies. I don't know what happens in your head or your heart or whatever. And I don't know 100% where you're at, Tim. I don't know. Right. It's good. A, it, do good. they find out that you were talking to me on the on the air, and then they they try to find me and uh, teach me a lesson for uh, being he's, uh, he's liberal and Jewish and You're all that other stuff? How scared he is, Tim. Right, right? now, listen, right. Guys. And it's good that you're being triggered because that's actually that's more realistic in the sense of that's where most of us as humanity go. We get triggered, and we're just on that. Then we're on this roller coaster ride that feels like we can't get off. Right. Yeah, right. you're right. And and the other the other part of it is for me is that, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure this has nothing to do with you. But if if I had a friend who I cared for the way I care for you and I suddenly realized that they were like a white supremacist or if they were a Nazi or Listen, a, we you know, have or, to we're coming to the I end. Would have a, a really I have to think, do I really want to associate with that person? We're coming to the end, Oscar. We have to yeah. stop. I want to thank you both for your incredible open-hearted honesty. I really do want to thank you because it's been a very, you both have given a great example for how you can be on opposite sides of the fence and still listen and understand each other and speak from the heart, which you both did. And you both brought the conversation down to where the bear poops, you know, the bottom line feelings and how it connects to your history. So. I, I'm, I have great admiration, respect, and gratitude for you both having the courage to do this and be in the ring. And I hope everyone watching and listening will use Tim and Oscar's example and bring this into your own lives to cool down the fighting that's going on and tearing our relationships apart. All right, everybody, thank you so much. I'll see you next time on Ask Dr. Love. You've been listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Sign up for Dr. Jamie's newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive her meditation audio that will guide you to open your heart and chill out during these stressful times.